Well, the stock market has certainly had a wobble. The S&P 500 is down 4.45% year to date, and the Nasdaq is down 9% since the highs in November, and almost in corrective territory. Growth stocks like the popular ones Kathy Wood is an avid investor in, like Palantir Technologies, Zoom as well as Shopify, are also taking an absolute beating. With the likes of Palantir down 13.6% year to date, Zoom down 9.1% and Shopify down 12.3%. So it's all looking somewhat bleak across equity markets. But aside from stocks, what's also interesting is that the cryptocurrency market is also somewhat mirroring that of the performance to the stock market. And it appears over the course of, well, at least the most recent cycle, that the cryptocurrency market is certainly becoming a little bit more sensitive to kind of broader macroeconomic conditions and very much following in the way in which the stock market has done over the course of the past couple of months. And we can see this by looking at the recent price performance of two of the most popular cryptocurrencies with the likes of Bitcoin down 13.5% year to date and Ethereum down 17.5% too. And it's certainly not just stocks and cryptocurrency because commodity markets are also having a bit of a shakeup as well. Geopolitical tension Tensions over in the Middle East are certainly causing havoc, with the Yemen-backed militant group firing airstrikes and missiles over into Abu Dhabi to blow up oil tankers which have unfortunately killed three people. All because they haven't been able to reach some kind of mutual agreement which seems pretty f extreme to me. But nonetheless it sent the price of oil through the roof, now trading at $88 per barrel due to the fears that the overall supply will dry up, especially if this kind of Yemen-backed militant group keep blowing up oil tankers. So look, economically, as well as geopolitically, it's all a bit of a sh show right now, and equity markets are bleeding quicker than you could probably look to sell your shares anyway. So the questions I'm kind of asking myself as an investor is, well, what are the main drivers behind the current stock market decline in which we're seeing? What can we do with our investment portfolios in order to weather the storm? And is this also the potentially the start of something where the worst is yet to come? Well, let's dive into all of these things that me and you as investors are certainly facing into. But before I do so, guys, my name is Mitch. I post all kinds of videos on investing and the stock market. If you do enjoy content like that, hit that big red subscribe button down below as well. Drop a like on the video, guys. Really, really helps out the channel. And with that being said, let's dive straight into it. So let's talk about this evolving situation over in the Middle East, which is certainly affecting oil markets and is certainly not really a great place to start. Because of course, these airstrikes, which are now appearing to be going back and forth between these two areas, is certainly far from ideal. You'd hope that all of this doesn't go on for too much longer because let's face it, the price of petrol and diesel is pretty expensive as it is and I may just have to go out and buy an electric vehicle if all of this stuff carries on. But jokes aside, the risks in which we're seeing right now because of the potential shortage of oil supply is certainly seeing the price of oil go up to the highs in which we haven't seen since 2014. Now why is this important you might ask because there might be some kind of correlation between oil prices and the performance of the stock market too. Well if you thought that you'd be wrong because there was a bit of research completed by the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland who looked into the price movements of oil and the stock market and discovered that there is very little correlation between oil prices and the performance of the stock market. But having said that, there is certainly a secondary effect which will certainly have an effect on the stock market which is known as the cost of doing business. Industries like manufacturing as well as logistics will certainly be the hardest hit as the biggest consumers of crude oil, along with consumers like you and me who are also paying through the roof for a full tank of diesel. Nonetheless, with higher costs of doing business, you better believe that these big corporations certainly aren't just gonna sit back and relax and let all of their profit margins be swallowed up due to the fact that some Iranians are firing missiles over the Persian Gulf. So instead, these companies will happily pass on these additional costs to their supply chain Chain, the supply chain will then go on to increase their cost too and then it only ever results in inevitably the likes of me and you guys being sat with increased prices as the end consumer. This is what we more commonly refer to as inflation. The numbers that are already sky high may just go even higher. Over 7% in the United States and over 5% here in the UK. There's really no wonder why real wages are certainly falling behind inflation and that's even after everybody's probably received their 2 or 3% pay rise at the start of this year. But unfortunately it can certainly get much worse because inflation continues to creep up in the way in which it has done over the course of the past couple of months, this will massively affect especially the lower household income families as the cost of living continues to rise faster than their ability to generate additional income. Oh, and it even gets worse for those of you guys out there right now who are currently living in probably some kind of apartment building which is commercially owned and therefore is not restricted to the price cap in energy markets. You've probably seen like my mate has the price of his gas and electricity bills 
bills going up to 600 to 700 pounds per month that's probably higher than the cost of even renting out the place which to be fair guys will probably wipe out a hell of a lot of people financially so with inflation showing no signs of slowing down with increased pressures on household income how does all of this play out uh, i don't know <laughs> well the bottom line is with increasing costs consumers will certainly be purchasing less and as a result it affects the top line revenue of some of our favorite companies which we're investing into and as a result it certainly affects their bottom line profit too which inevitably results in an economic slowdown until some kind of economic equilibrium is reached during this period of a potential recession which may be on the cards then i'm kind of only ever expecting that stock prices will continue their retreat back to some kind of fair value and look the truth of the matter is we've probably all been blinded by the kind of unprecedented upside that we've seen in the stock market over the course of the past couple of years. Stock prices right now are trading at historical price premiums which haven't been seen since the dot-com bubble burst back in the early 2000s and have far surpassed the premiums that were being paid just before the Wall Street crash of 1929. So could we see a full-blown stock market crash during 2022? Well, for me personally, I'm certainly not going to write it off. Because the fact of the matter is we've certainly got economic problems, we've got geopolitical tensions, we've also got historically high stock prices too, and just to top it all off, we're going through a pandemic as well. So I guess more logically speaking, it's probably not completely out of the question that stock market prices could certainly crash 20% or more during the course of this year. And as well, half of YouTube thinks so, but then again, half of YouTube says that there's going to be a stock market crash at least once a month. Oh, it went to zero! Regardless of whether you think that there's going to be any kind of stock market crash or not, to kind of ease your mind somewhat, many investment banks over in the United States do actually believe that the S&P 500 will actually make a gain throughout the course of the year. Goldman Sachs being one of those companies that are actually pretty optimistic, actually forecasting a 9% growth rate for the S&P 500, which on the whole would actually just be another solid sound year of returns because they're very much in line with the long-term averages that the S&P 500 has provided. But with that all in mind, investment banks potentially saying that the stock market could go up, kind of other more logical reasoning suggesting that the stock market could go down, how can we? as investors actually weather this storm well for me personally i think the obvious route to go down would be to look into kind of financials or energy stocks as a potential value play especially during the first half of the year i watched an interview on bloomberg european market open the other morning and for the life of me i can't find the interview that took place but there was an analyst that came on that pretty much said the same thing but he did also reiterate that kind of value plays in the financials and energy sector would only be a short-term trade and not an investment and instead what he actually said was during the first six months of this year these kind of value plays may be short-term beneficiaries but then over the course of the back end of the year perhaps over the kind of a 12-month period he did go on to say that kind of tech stocks would be the main source of returns for investors especially during the back end of the year and to follow up on that i did then go on to find another interview over on cnbc from an individual who looks far more intelligent than i am who talks about kind of a similar investment approach and a similar investment strategy for 2022 as well so let's take a listen to what he had to say so first the buy on dip fomo tina whatever you want to call it that conditioning is still there and we saw it again but the more the liquidity regime changes the more it's going to be under pressure look i like people who have pricing power that's what you're looking for right here people who have pricing power tech comes in that category they have pricing power they're not affected by inflation on the cost side as much as others are so look for pricing power because that's going to be a key determinant going forward. So as he said, anything with a high level of pricing power is probably a good place to put your money. So regardless of whether your Apple position is down 6.5% year to date, or perhaps even your Alphabet position being down 5.88%, this could certainly be a very good dip buying opportunity. But underpinning all of this, the question kind of stands is, is the worst yet to come? You do still certainly have to bake in the fact that there is still a risk factor on the markets right now that there could be a big, big sell off any time during this year or perhaps even into 2023 but for me personally as an individual who simply can't predict the market i think i'll still continue to invest just as and when i see value to do so sure i certainly think that the kind of historical premiums in which everybody's paying right now or certainly has been paying will certainly need to come down to somewhat more fair value especially if earnings take a dip due to the levels of inflation in which we're currently facing into but regardless of kind of the broader stock market conditions i still think it's important 
important to still focus on that longer term time horizon of perhaps the next three to five years. And I think in the meantime, there will certainly be opportunities throughout the course of the next three years or so to buy into the market whilst the market's trading at a discounted price in order to capitalize the most over the course of that long-term investing time horizon. So with that said, guys, be sure to let me know what your thoughts are on all of this stock market stuff down in the comment section below. And if you do want to take a little bit of an inside look into my trading to on two portfolio and just how badly that's crashed out over the course of the past couple of weeks, then be sure to click on this video here. As well, guys, be sure to drop a like on this video as well. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And with that being said, I'll see you over in the next video.